Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate and to a buffet of seasoned yet topical issues to provoke your palate and energize you to take action. I'll be saying it straight to the creatives amongst us. Create, don't merely imitate. Seydou stirs your honest nest with his advocacy. He's saying, when all else fails, is it not time to legitimize the so-called forces of darkness and bring them into the light? Ekene straightens out a matter of confusion. She says, the right response to the elderly is neither deference nor indifference. Simi Fajamirokun, our newest advocate, is considering framing an advert to read Leaders Wanted Urgently. The emphasis might well be on the word <laughs> urgently. Liberals, with his finger on the pulse as always, is tackling part two of the Magu EFCC saga. As he would say, it's time to bring out the popcorn. I say settle down and let's get stuck in after the break. The fine line that divides one perceived activity from another can mark the difference between criminal and legitimate. So today I'll be talking about imitation, flattery and plagiarism. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, or is it? Sometimes, is it not the case that the imposter wishes to live off of the work of the original author or performer. A few days ago this last week, I came across a post on Instagram on my friend and artist Rom Isiche's page. He is one of Nigeria's top fine artists. His works are expensive. An unknown artist named Tukuru had tried to reproduce a 2004 work by Rom and a Lagos gallery had posted the inferior copy on their page. The two works are shown here, Rom's first and Tukuru's copy after. So who's to be shamed here, Tukuru or the gallery that posted his work? Has Tukuru learned anything from Rom Isiche's work? I think not. You see, history is replete with inspired works, with new works inspired by older ones, or even other cultures, but never does greatness result from plagiarism. You see, the moment Rom completed that original work in 2004, it becomes available to inspire others. <clears throat> it is possible for another artist to work in the same style, or surely not to try to produce the exact same work. Schools of thought are built around one or more artists. The same in architecture, product design, or fashion design. It is not the act of using Isiche as a springboard that is the issue. If that were the case, he should be flattered and proud that his work has spawned new works by others. Originality is actually an overrated myth anyway. Some years ago, a well-known artist plagiarized the work of another. All was revealed by the art journalist, the soul adventurer. It was such a shameful time. A lot of art is fed by what has come before. But originality lies where the talent of the practitioner reinvents or reinterprets that older work so that something new is gifted to the world. Personally, I really do not care if my work as an architect is an inspiration. I'll be flattered. If it were plagiarized, I would feel sad for the cheat, but I'll still be flattered. So this advocacy is aimed at creatives. Do not call yourself one if you are unprepared to be one. Create, not copy. No to plagiarism. 
Yes, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think your advocacy is very balanced in the sense that, you know, you, you do observe at some point that there's no such, is there really such a thing as original art? Mm -hmm. We know that a lot of what we imitate, so to speak, is taken from something that already was, you yeah. know. Um, even the artist that's drawing a real life person is, is taking from something, Absolutely. you know, even acting and so on and so forth. So the more real, the more, the more identical it is to something you've seen, the more people say, wow, you, you're a good actor, or you're a good uh, artist. Um, but you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, why would you go and take it exactly? And um, when I was looking up the whole area of fan base, because there's a whole area of fan art, yes. you know, um, they, they made an observation that they rarely do prosecute people for plagiarizing. And the reason being that a lot of the fan art artists are not going out to um, exploit. They don't tend to commercialize. Truly, truly, they, they're yes. doing it out of adulation. Correct. And if anything, they try and do it in such a way to draw attention to the original artist. But where you now have the commercial aspect coming in, I feel there's something wrong with that. You know, yes, you don't want to prosecute as the artist, but really, should they be getting away with plagiarism? I'm not sure they should. So it's, it's, it's an open discussion. Yes. As a matter of fact, I mean, liberals, you're, you're, you're a legal man. How do you see, I mean, you know, how do you see it? The problem mostly uh, is the fact that, uh, like here, we always say there are, are actions, there are no consequences to our actions or inactions. Mm -hmm. and, and so since there are no consequences, in some cases, even the man that plagiarized your work will tell you go to hell. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can plagiarize, plagiarize, you know, an entire set of laws without even yes. oh my. bothering to, <laughs> you know, disease bill. to... <laughs> <laughs> to, live, to even recognize the originality yeah. until we are busted. Mm -hmm. And that's why a professor of law in ABU recently uh, plagiarized the whole uh, work of, you know, and then when they asked him, he said that, um, you know, the original author merely wrote the keynote or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so um, I know that um, um, the matter had been taken up and um, I know they will deal with it. If we, we extend that to all, you know, facet of uh, national, including music. Yeah, you find no, that that music, 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 musical society takes you know such things seriously now, okay. and you must you know seek permission from the yeah. original artist. And uh, so, if there are consequences for such actions, mm. I, 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 especially at, I was um, I was um, I visited uh, Ben on one who's um, at gallery, gallery uh, yes, somewhere yes. in Ikoyi, Ikoyi, and then he the son I met yeah, with the, the son, son yes. he complained bitterly about you know um, an artist who was. Um, you know, uh, plagiarizing his father's that's work cool. and wow. selling them. So and selling, you see, that's yes. The and so my my other cousin and I went to confront that artist. Mm -hmm. And even though he denied it, but we tried to bring them together to, you know, Imagine. discuss it and find mm -hmm. them a solution to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So it's um, you you know how bad it it, it, it can be mm -hmm. when some you 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 create a piece of work, mm -hmm. and then you're not making so much from it, and then somebody out there is making millions from that. That's your sweat. Even, now you say even home videos. No, I mean, I'm now thinking of areas where we tend to play. Like, we take an, a, like a, maybe a designer outfit. If I want to sew something and I don't want to pay, say, yeah. for, I will go and take the picture of that one yeah. and get my seamstress yeah. to make it. Have I plagiarized? You see what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to pay whatever for Givenchy's whatever or even um, well, Grey, our own Nigerian. So I will get the style and I'll take it to my seamstress and say, make, make this one for me. Yeah, but the thing is you <laughs> need also to recognize the original creator. And how do I do that? Design. How do I do you that? You know, in some cases you hear, oh, um, uh, this is um, um, Ellen Hardin from so and so. Okay. You know, and then my friend, I remember then in Benin, my friend would say, well, this is a Tonero Agbomaro copied from Helen Hardin. Yes. <laughs> you know? I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's robbery. Um, but we all do it in, it's like, she, you know, like I kind of said, in terms of like taking a picture, I'm going to show the same style. And, you know, there's an angle where there's really nothing new under the sun. You can argue that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the part that hurts is when it's so obvious you away food from someone's mouth. So if you're not going to give credit and then you you know, like I'll talk about the public sector space. So you submit your proposal about this grand new um, thing you want to do or do whatever you want to supply. And then literally, you know, you would see uh, the same proposal, but with another company, uh, uh, company name. Yeah, they just on remove it. So your they first page and last page. Wow, wow, that's terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's just terrible. Yeah. And I also have been on the 
receiving end when um, I was working with one of the state governments and um, so we're given a job to do, a research job to do, an R&D job to do, and then the SA comes and meets me after the meeting and says, we've done it already. Just give us your company logo, your company name, so we'll slap it on the other. That doesn't make sense. I've just been saying, no, we don't want you to spend any money so that we can share. Hmm. We want to share. So wow. just bring it, and we've done it. In fact, see the reports. The report. Wow. <laughs> so it was just, it, it's both on the... Even when I've been on the receiving end and you want to uh, be, be, tell you bring your company logo, they'll just slap it on some firework that was done. I mean, it's the wrongest thing. It just tells the value of the society that Yeah, because now you're talking, I'm realizing that people don't even realize. It's a terrible, disgusting thing. So people do they don't even realize they don't they're realize doing it. the wrong thing. They don't no, they do. They know. They know. No, they, they, don't realize know. they know they are doing the wrong thing. Oh, maybe, oh, so what way is the... Yeah, say do. Yes, I was just going to add quickly that um, this... Plagiarism, it's, there, it, it, it's very huge. It cuts across so many verticals. I mean, I, I, I imagine uh, people, furniture makers, for instance, mm. in other climes, you know, you could have like your piece patented. So some of those people don't even understand their rights. You yeah. don't know that you can actually patent a piece and claim, you know, damages if somebody should reproduce those kind of pieces. So I believe to some extent there's some uh, there's lack of ignorance and we don't have the right uh, legal, uh, what do you call it, framework to enforce like uh, liberals mentioned mm. for people that, you know, uh, violate such such problem. But it is a big problem that a lot of people, you know, they violate without, without even knowing, Yeah. you know. Yeah. So you need to understand first your rights that you can actually uh, legalize this thing. You can pretend them. And then if anybody violates them, there should be... Uh, but I, I guess, say you also, you know, like Simi is saying that it's robbery. You know, maybe the fatigue is also in the fact that you are the one having to pursue that person that has robbed you. Whereas, you know, most, uh, am I wrong? Most of that forms of robbery, Absolutely. the government will take it upon right. themselves to pursue. You now have to, in your own spare time, start chasing down somebody who has, who is probably too poor anyway, because that's why they're plagiarizing. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the some of them are very rich, not, okay. like home videos. Yeah. Okay. You see the actor, you know, can barely buy a car, mm. but the man who is uh, plagiarizing and mass producing, oh, wow. he's riding in, you know, expensive oh, wow. cars, ah, you know. And so that's why, like you said, that's why government will set up, you know, agencies mm. to ensure that these things are caught. But like all those other minor ones that, including the ones in government, you know, you, the fatigue of you having to run after, in some cases, and that's why when you go to some sh showrooms, they'll tell you no pictures, because yes, uh, yes. they don't want to go reproduce yes. that work. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, thank you all. Um, I'm sure this is something we all think about uh, for quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's a very old problem. So up next, Seidu goes where some might say angels <laughs> fear to tread. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Spiritual alternatives to Nigeria quandary. The word esoteric comes from the Greek for inner, which is the exploration of hidden inner teachings of spirituality. My advocacy today borders on a topic rarely talked about but very visible in our polity. In Nigeria and other African countries, the beliefs and the powers and influence of esotericism is widespread. They are embedded in our cultures and beliefs even though we subscribe to traditional religious beliefs. Such occult powers may include witchcraft, sorceries, uh, possession of extraordinary powers, divination, and ability to foretell the future, conjuring the dead, mammoth spirit, juju, gods and goddesses, 
and ability to control spirits. It is common contemporary practice to find purveyors with varying claims to veracity of solutions for politicians seeking appointments, students seeking <clears throat> exam successes, spouse seeking to influence one another, contractors seeking to obtain business favors, job applicants seeking employment. Such spiritual contractors in all probability will have a debatable success ratio depending on whose opinion is sought. The consumer of the service who may also double in some instances as a victim or the targeted party whose victimhood is certainly not in question. While we openly deny these gods, we are afraid of the consequences of defying them. This fear keeps even the most powerful people in check. And one could only wonder why this tool wouldn't be put into positive use. I wonder how our country would have turned out if our politicians were made to swear by the ones they truly fear, Amadioha, Shongo, or other traditional deities before being sworn into office, or Babalaos manning our borders and recruited into our armed forces, or imagine diviners issuing driver's licenses. I imagine that since all else has failed, we can only hope that perhaps this may be our hidden secret weapon to take this country to greater heights. Um, um, say to Adafwen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> it translates. That, that way means it is well with you. Hey, it is it very is well so with very you. Well you. I'm in perfect stimulacrum with you today, <laughs> completely. <laughs> because you see, um, I am. I. I. Okay, I know the Kenya would disagree with this. I, know I already you call say. my name if I speak. See, <laughs> um, the topic is you know, in, in, in our society today, I won't say all else has failed, but because of the forgiveness nature of others. Let's try our own. You know, a man will put his hand on the Holy Bible or the Holy Quran and still lie. I remember uh, uh, a politician, a famous politician in Badon, asking uh, an aspirant, you want to play politics, can you put your hand in a Quran and lie against somebody and still swear that it is the truth? And the person said, no, he said, then you are not ready for politics. If you put your hand in Amadioha or in Shongo, you won't, fear will not allow you. You remember, yeah, Jerry Rollins also mm -hmm. gave an analogy. He said, look, two persons were taken to court and were charged for murder. The other one kept insisting, it is this Mr. A that did it. And Mr. A said, I won't say anything. The two of us are from the same village. Just take us before our local deity and you will know the truth. Said of all of this, uh, your, it is the same man that brought the Bible that uh, created the lie detector machine. Why? If uh, do you know, so we have. Um, I, I think this for me. Let's begin to embrace some of these our traditional <laughs> method of doing things. You will get quick results. Absolutely. You see, the thing is, mm -mm. They, they they will tell you in the West that the law is based on God's law. Yes. And so in God we trust and and all that. It appears we no longer fear that version no. of God. No, no. Here yes. anyway. So the best thing is if we're going to get people to behave. We need to get them to, yeah, to, you. to a version that will make them actually fear. Yes. So that fear of God, if that is a commodity that we're after, then we, we have it. That's yeah. the funny thing. And we it, don't it realize it. It has disadvantages, But, but liberals, what will happen? The moment we start to use it, I believe that in 10 years, when you say I'm at your house, I will be laughing. Uh, okay. And I will still tell well, you that. Well, but by that time, we would have at graduated at with something like that. At least he has come full circle. Sorry, um, say do, much as Libras is in perfect stimulacum, I, I actually thought you were joking initially. I thought this must be. Then I said, this guy is serious. So, so all I'll tag on to your advocacy at the end when you said it will raise us to new heights is I'll say it will plunge us to new depths. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me, let me, let me land the point simply because, yeah, 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 you know, if you just Google, if you Google the word occult, because that's really what you saw. Yeah, 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 wait, no, wait, no, let me, no, no, call me, no, no, may okay, I say cannot, something? No, may I say something? You been speaking. Mm -hmm. Why are you, why are you no, ganging no, 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 up on no, no, me? Let me no, finish. I'm coming. No, if you Google the word, no. even I'm at your heart, Google all those things. Google yeah. juju. Come in, come in. Because I Google them. I'm coming now. I'm coming. The material that you collate, that you find around those words, are usually people who are seeking wealth. They want to gather wealth. A lot of people are self-seeking. I'm coming. No. I haven't made my point. You haven't heard my point. So my issue with all this is that people don't actually know what they're, they're 
tangoing with. Because what you're doing is you're opening up, you're basically making the gatekeepers lawlessness. Because these spirits are lawless no. spirits. There's no, no. way. It's, it's actually confirmed that a lot of people who <laughs> tango with juju, and, uh, they're usually self-seeking, they do ritual killing, they do all kinds no. of things. So that's, those are people you want to make your gatekeepers. No. That's, Good luck to you, but not in my can time. It, can, it will never happen. Uh, that was the main. That was, yeah. If you want to take, if you want to take, um, take, Haiti, right take Haiti, where they do voodoo as a, as a legitimate practice and see how progressive uh, they are. Uh, can, uh, that, you can use them as a sample. Can, uh, they do the voodoo, man. but they don't. Um, you, you see how progressive way. Haiti are. Um, if you look Lagos to Benin, I mean, you just see all kinds of creatures on both sides <laughs> of, the, of the border. Um, but it, I think the spirits, um, and also just the, I would agree with, uh, you know, Ekene that it's, uh, it's, it, that would be plunging us into uh, just deep, deeper, uh, just a hellhole really. But literally the spirit of what Seydou said was actually, you know, in terms of, you know, what, is it better we have the naked, our nakedness, you know, be brought out so we can try and fix ourselves because why lie on that Quran and why lie on that the Bible when all you did was you know slap a poster on it but really you're still practicing to do jazz ritual killing and all these things you know so I mean maybe if we actually accepted what it is right as opposed to okay swear on whichever you know, God you fear correct no nobody will agree to swear on those things or don't mind that. They would rather swear on Bible mm. or because they know that these ones are lenient. Bring the water from Uchi. I'm trying to tell you that the, say, the God that doesn't judge you instantly, that's the one you should fear. Should not, not these ones that are flexing. Ekene, Ekene, boy, no those, are, those are not gods. Ekene, you haven't Ekene, seen the real God some. flex. Ekene, Ekene, <laughs> these people, almost all of them, when they seek power, when they seek political office, mm. when they are looking for success in exams, in marriages, in... That, why do you think even some of these... Um, these prayer houses, you have so many prayer houses mm. now. A lot of them are these Babala Yeah, I know. Because they hide, you know, yeah, because they, they know they, that. All, all I'm saying is that all these Babala are the as, small. As Christians. Yeah, all these Babala take it from me. Or what? Maybe. See, and they're the small league. This yeah. God that they're thinking that is not, is what letting them get away say, with anything. That's the big saying. league. Somebody they packaged their, their sorry, can, quickly, Chuka. Somebody packaged their own God and brought to us. Oh, gosh. And we're back we, to that discussion. Yeah, we accepted <laughs> He's it. my God now. now. Sinker. So, Sinker. He's no more than God. The, he now told you that yours is inferior. No, it's, it's not. fake. It's not, you can't, you can't uh, tell some of us who have believed and have a personal relationship that it's a package. No, unfortunately, you're not. We have already, we're too far gone. No, you're several generations after. When they came, they made us believe that ours was wrong. But I didn't take it from my parents. Right. I took no, no. it direct. No, 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 no. no. That's what. Okay. Uh, so you can't tell me that no, 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 no. it's not You are even bringing us back to my argument about <laughs> originality. Where will you take it direct? Where will you take I took it direct? That's why, anyway, that's like, when I'm ready to okay. preach. Okay, okay. Why is it that all of a sudden the only thing we think about <laughs> about our own local gods are the bad things like I yes. want to kill that man? Yes, you know why? No, but no. I'll tell you why. It's very simple. The white man came and told those that wanted to listen. That that was what theirs. Okay, was we good made for. a movie mm. living so, in bondage. So hang on, the white man didn't let me finish. That's that. No, 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 no. Uh, but that's it. the black man telling, telling you what that's Juju the mentality looks like. of the black man. We're telling they you what we experienced by the white man. All, okay. Put it this way: if there are a lot of evil being perpetrated by local religion, it is simply because yes, a lot of good people run behind the white man yes. and left from <laughs> evil. Could it not be the other way around? We that need, the the so-called white man's no, religion made them good. No, no. Let me finish. Don't what underestimate the influence do, of no, what we need to do. What we need to do is to go back, all of us good people, I'll watch go, you back go back to Amadio House. I'll see what Amadio kids go After you, after you, Chuka. Africa was not a After you, when you've gone back to Amadio House. of iniquity before. After you, when you've gone back to Shongo. All of these gods. You mm. have the white one, mm. you have the black one, you have the red one. Mm -hmm. You know, so the white one mm. usually is a peacemaker. Mm. And so when your white people came, mm. they replaced those are white gods with no, their you know, say, practice what you preach. Sis. Go to Amadio. Go to Let me be watching your life. Let me be let me be watching your life. How do you now? know that I don't practice? Be it watching already. my own life. I will be with the other god. <laughs> Seidu has spoken his piece, albeit to a mixed reception. Time for some straightening out of a confused relationship after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country 
when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Neither going forwards nor backwards can be a sign of confusion, don't you think? I'm going to be talking about Nigeria's confused relationship with her elders. The other day when encountering someone I would term as an elder by virtue of his notable maturity, I found myself wondering how to greet or even begin relating to this person. Am I expected to curtsy, call him sir, offer some sort of show of veneration to appease whatever expectations he might have with regards to how the power dynamic ought to play out? Of course, these expectations could all have been in my head and not in his. Whereas other countries may have to negotiate their relationship with the older generation, in Nigeria, it's made more complex by the fact that we have a strong plurality of cultures that have set a mold for how these things ought to play out. And whether we like it or not, these are our reference points. Indeed, many have blamed the stagnation in Nigeria's development on our inability to cut the apron strings of the elders. And some of them, in turn, have been more than happy to convert the same apron strings into a noose by which to suffocate us. We stand seemingly idly by whilst octogenarians run the country. We say we're waiting for power to be handed over to us. As we say here, we will surely wait long. At the other extreme, we seem to exhibit a disconnect with the elders in a way that's not evident with the generation before us. Amidst the stalking COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Chikwe Hekwazu stated recently that whereas young people are a major driver of the virus, the elderly are the ones paying the price most of the time. With figures showing that three out of five deaths were among the over 50s or the elderly. I even heard of a tragic case of an elderly person who was only discovered in their home days after dying from COVID-19, alone and neglected. This is surely alien to our cultural heritage. For Nigeria to move forward, there needs to be a handing over of the baton from one generation to the next that speaks of mutual respect and effectively says, you've run your race, now it's my turn. We don't need to wait till we're on the receiving end of this fake veneration and neglect to realize we have a societal problem. Elders need to spend time with the young and to understand and develop a healthy respect for them as the noun generation. Children and grandchildren need to be actively encouraged to develop a relationship with the elders amongst them, as this in turn helps in shaping their character positively growing up. To aid the transition of power, more of us younger ones, and I count myself among the younger ones, need to get involved in governance. To address issues of neglect, government needs to be pressured to prioritize healthcare provision for the elderly by way of health insurance. And really, it ought to bother all of us that in this day and age, the systems for obtaining pensions rely on an opt-in process nicknamed, I'm alive. In the words of my elder sister, the right response to the elderly is neither deference nor indifference. And ultimately, the greatest nations are the ones that make provision for the transition of the weakest amongst us. I hope you'd agree. Yeah, um, uh, for me, again, uh, um, I, I like your angle to, you know, your advocacy. You, but um, all of this, what you're simply saying is mentoring. Okay. Mentoring. That's what I understand it to okay. be. But the, the plenty grammar will always confuse uh, the everyday man. <laughs> and that's your brand. That's, mm. what, that's what I say I like it. <laughs> but to take it to the man on the street, mm. it's, um, you're talking about mentoring and provision for the elderly. The elderly should mentor the young ones and mm -hmm. then the young ones should in turn provide you know, facilities for the elderly. Okay. That's you know, what I understand by it. It's, if it's from that angle, fantastic. Why we have some of the problems that we have today is that there are no more mentoring, mentorship. You know, so you find out that there is no transition even from the old, young to the old, okay. except those that are elevated to come chop at the table. Okay. Uh, you know, and so once you are elevated to come chop, and then the way the elderly carry themselves, you also want to carry yourself like that. Do you know who I am? Mm. And you know, so, but if there is a system where the elderly understand that, look, it is time to leave the stage, you know, stay at the back end, but you are properly, properly mentored young ones who would you, you believe will take over. 
you know, after you, and then you will relax and know fully whether they will provide for you even when, you know, you are no more able to provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of that, that's why you see the older, the older ones who always want to remain on the stage, even will die there, mm. you know, because they know they have only amassed so much for themselves. In some cases, some of these younger ones, they feel they are trying to secure by keeping funds for without teaching them how to manage it will end up mismanaging. Mm. Okay. I've spoken plenty English. No, no, you've spoken. Me, me, I even want to talk about mentoring in subsequent, but uh, let's, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. What, what does Seidu have to say? It's very interesting advocacy. Um, in a way, I, I look at it from a cultural, uh, cultural perspective. I agree with the liberals. The only uh, portion there is, you know, the older ones refusing to leave the stage. So we have those those old ones, you know, who've been there since independence, still ruling us today or playing key roles in our polity without allowing young ones to move up and take responsibility. And I think in a way that has also accounted for uh, some of the challenges we're, we're, we're facing as a people today. And you cannot divorce this from some of our cultural practice. There's so much reference to all the people. You're not, you're not allowed to be creative. And that kind of dampens, you know, Grow, I, say, do are you saying you reverence? Know, and I think we need to do. Sorry, are you saying reverence? Re, 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 yeah, re, we yeah. revere them. You okay. know, all, the older ones, the okay. mini god. You don't want to disobey them. You don't mm -hmm. want to go against what even even Challenge though their them. ideas yeah. might be arcane. Yeah. You know, but you don't want to go against them because our culture generally teaches that we should, you know, submit to our older ones. Mm. You know, our parents, uncles, and whatever. You know, and that doesn't allow. In other clients need to be convinced that you know what the older one is saying. Well, here yeah, you dare not, you know. And in that space, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of resentment, and the circle just goes on and on until we find a way to break it. Yeah. So it's a big problem that needs to be addressed. The older one, there must be clear transition. You can't remain there forever. You can be there and mentor the younger ones, but allow them to make their mistakes. You know, allow for that space to be open for new ideas. That would be my own contribution. Mm. Um, my, I don't, I, I, I don't even think it's a, for me, I don't think it's a confusing relationship with, with, with elders. I think um, people just need to move out of the way. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm tired of um, just simple facts. You know, I, when I'm speaking to... A room full of people, uh, young people, um, like 35 and under, 40 or under sometimes. And just like how many of, how many people own their homes, right? And like maybe if there's 100 people, maybe three or four shyly raised their hand. And then if you were in, if you ask that question 30, 40 years ago of the 30-year-olds and the, you know, um, early for you know 30 year olds of that era generation and down i mean most people in the room would have owned their homes their mm, properties mm. so i don't really see it as confusing when a bunch of people have held on to because a home ownership for me is a big deal because that's yeah. how you can get on the I table a lot of the time we're talking about getting on the table but you don't have the young person you're talking about including doesn't have an asset doesn't have money is broke busted and disgusted right because some folks have decided to stifle the pipeline and just stay there and not move out of the way. So for me, I see it as an economic thing and people just need to move out of the freaking way because it's, re it's really annoying to see generation after generation and each generation getting um, um, financially stifled except for, you know, this, uh, I, I, and, and then they have the nerve to come out and say, oh, you, Yahoo, all young people know is Yahoo and Big Brother and all this very, <laughs> you know, very, uh, very derogatory statements. And yep. you're like, but you're, you've been in the same position, like for the last 30, 35 years. When yep. last did you invite, did you deliberately, intentionally invite a young person to a board meeting and see how that works? I mm. mean, the Indians do it, the Germans do it. How many multi generational companies do we have in Nigeria? None. You know, so they just get out of the way. There's nothing. Yeah, no, I, I guess the, the issue of we do now. the, we do. the we confusion was just that. Companies now. Yeah, no, no, my politics is, now is okay. multi generational. <laughs> no, I guess the but issue yeah. of, the issue of confusion was more that on the one hand we're busy revering them 
and not taking the stand. And on the other hand, we're neglecting them. But you know, maybe that'll take another advocacy to, to thrash out. OK, we've stated our case in a bid to pave the way forward. Now it's your turn to state your case and enrich the conversation. On EFCC, ICPC, and transparency, Ikenna Ogwogo says, that old boy got me. <laughs> I know what you mean, Ikenna. Some of, some of us are still seriously amused by Libra says, God, God, where are you? <laughs> I know this didn't detract from the seriousness of the subject matter, though. On colonial mentality or failure that can't be whitewashed, Ikumelo Aribi says, it's good every time to hear Nigerians analyze and talk about Nigeria. Nigeria has never had a leader that will channel the course and direct direction of this our Nigeria. Nigeria needs leaders of quality, wise, knowledgeable, with mission and values. Without above mentioned qualities, we're not going anywhere. Today, our leaders are bleep, 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 just appeasing some people without thinking about what's good for the country. So Nigeria still has a longer way to go. We are the capital of poverty in the world, an oil industry country. What a tragedy. Well, Ikumelo, the story is still being written. It may well be one of redemption when the dust settles. After all, are we not still here? On greedy accumulation, Phantom 2K, a regular watcher, 2K10, has a bit to say. I know this isn't very realistic, he says, especially considering the administration that is currently in power. But the death penalty should be introduced for those that misappropriate public funds to enrich themselves. What these governors stroke leaders don't realize is that when they embezzle public funds to enrich themselves, they deprive the people of basic daily necessities, which leads to an increase in crime, poverty, hunger, and ultimately lowers the life expectancy. So indirectly, these governors slash leaders are committing murder. So they should get a taste of their own medicine to teach their cohorts and citizens enticed a lesson. Once again, we appreciate this platform and the great people behind it. Please continue to fight the good fight. Wow, Phantom, the death penalty? Not to, make, uh, not to make light of the seriousness of the point you have made, but would half of Nigeria not be on the death row? Thank you for joining in our advocacy by sharing your thoughts, though. Keep the conversation going on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Simi puts out an urgent advertisement. Just wait and see. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. No leaders wanted. Recently at the salon, I overheard one of the stylists say, Nigeria has everything except for leaders. He said so passionately. That God has blessed this nation with everything. For example, in the north, you can even plant yam on a rock and it will grow, just small sand, and that yam will grow. That's how God bless us past. But these are leaders are from hell. Thank God for this COVID-19 that, that they can travel and have to deal with the nonsense, the way that they do. <laughs> with headlines of the EFCC chairman being arrested by the DSS, the embarrassing infighting of the ruling APC party between its chairman and many factions. The, fest the Festus Kiamo outburst at the National Assembly. It seems Nigeria advertised a poster somewhere that shows no leaders wanted. And so there we have it, everything but leaders. In this crisis, with the exception of a few bright spots, the opportunity for leaders to rise to the chat might have been lost on us. If bureaucracy was really one of the problems with government delivering results, then you would think that this emergency will be used to push difficult policy reforms. 
through. But our acting leaders seem to not have thought much about reforms or actually improving the system. I guess it's really hard to envision a better Nigeria. It's just much easier to jostle for the next election and maintain a toxic political system that keeps new entrants out. So the talent pipeline in politics remains stale and uninspiring. The, one jostling, the ones jostling for 2023 literally need, would need to buy votes, unleash mayhem, and rig like it was going out of style, simply because bad products just don't sell. But what if we put out a different ad? What if we admit that though it may seem like we have everything in Nigeria, but everything becomes nothing if there's no leadership? What if we edit our original ad to say, leaders wanted urgently? Maybe we could get visionaries to see past the broken education system and build a public education system that actually equips Nigeria's future workforce. Maybe we could have a healthcare system that saves lives and also healthcare policy that covers Nigerians so every trip to the hospital is not a life sentence to poverty. Maybe we could retain our sports mavericks and not be an outsourcing ground for athletic talent because of the facilities and the deliberate attempts to train and pay our stars well. Maybe we could have a transport system that is fit for purpose. Maybe our natural resources, oil, gas, gold, and more, could actually create wealth for the communities they are sourced from while creating jobs and a multiplier effect on our social economy. Maybe Nigerian leaders could make black people all over the world proud. What if? What if? The end. <laughs> I don't know if the issue is the adverts. I'm sure, I, I'm sure that's not where you're landing it in a sense, but you're, you're basically saying we should be looking out for the right kind of leadership as the way to get it right, if, if I get you right. Um, and I think we all appreciate that because I, I've been, that's where my focus has been in more recent times is how can we make it possible to have conversations with people who are more interested in serving and doing the right thing? I've even started to appeal to people that I know, and, you know, and maybe I'll be appealing to you as well, to say, you know, there are all these webinars people are attending now. Why don't we have a webinar around ideologies and ideas about pushing Nigeria forward? I'm even appealing to the women now because I think, well, we've tried the men. <laughs> like Sadie says, we've tried this will try that. Let's now try a new perspective, you know, because I just really think that we need to roll up our sleeves and get involved. And then for me, the real freshness about it will be to now start engaging the grassroots, you know, because a lot of times people are focused on the, the middle class and the upper class. And those people, to my mind, seem apathetic when it comes to pushing for what they want, because they say to themselves, whether you have Buhario or you have Atiku, I'll turn on my gen, I'll ride my Jeep, I'll still be okay. So, but the grassroots are where the, the, the shoe pinches. So we need to now start having that kind of dialogue where in, in foreign climes, they go door to door and engage the grassroots and say, this is what we're going to do for you. This is what we're going to do for you. Come, let's talk about you know, a new a, a handover. Let's talk about power changing hands. I think we really need to be serious. It's 2020 and 2023 is around the corner. So those of us who are thinking these thoughts should go beyond thinking the thoughts. We should now start coming together under a platform where we can start exchanging ideas and then get behind the right people. It can be from amongst us. We don't need to wait for the known faces. I, I hope uh, I'm, can saying, can I, I'm saying something. Yeah, uh, can I, yeah, yeah. you are saying something, but mm -hmm. um, um, just that you don't understand the complexity That's of the problem. That's what they problem. always say. That's why you're seeing it from mm -hmm. that point of view. <laughs> you just talked about mentorship. Mm -hmm. People don't just wake up mm -hmm. and say, we want to. People, go check other nations. Political leaders are mentored. You want to be a lawyer, you go to school. You are taught, but, but you the, are mentored. Our predecessors Let, have me, nothing to that's, teach us that's now. What I'm coming They're recycling to. corruption. That's where I'm coming to. So you are taught medicine, you are taught law. It's only here. You want to be a leader, you are not taught anything. Mm -hmm. Somebody just wakes up one day and says, <laughs> ah, Professor Skiamu has been talking on TV. It can I be better. He let him be come join us. Liberals, he said, oh, let him come. You know, and that's how they are picked. And then when you are picked, there are conditions, terms and conditions apply. And so, look, when you get here... So how do you break the mind? Mood? So, it's a long-term thing. That's where we have been missing it. The point we miss it is we think we can just do this webinar uh, three years and start. then... You have to start And somewhere. then uh, three years after, you go run for election. You, I remember telling people like Fela, Fela Drotoe here that you are, you are a joker. 
you don't just wake up because you have been delivering seminars everywhere. Exactly. You just wake up <laughs> three months to At election. Least he stuck his neck out. Wait now. Mm. Look, it is better not to stick your neck out than stick your neck out without planning. Mm -hmm. And so you don't don't also be selfish. Build a platform that 10 years, 15 years from now would be able to at least, you know, do something. The president of Pakistan started like 18 years before now. He was, he retired from playing um, baseball, cricket. Cricket. cricket, and then he started building. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long it took by Buhari? Mm -hmm. You know, so, but the problem we, the rest of us have is that we just think that three years is enough, and then we is just move start? into the election. What I'm saying is let's at least start. I, that's why I said, yes, mm. you, are, you are speaking. Mm. But what we need, so that we have it at the back of our mind, we are starting night. It's not for us to benefit. Absolutely. If it is for us to benefit, exactly. we can as well just leave it. Exactly. It is for the benefit of maybe generations to come. Years. So by that time, we would have established a system that, right. you know, will mentor them, mm. that will be transparent, that would outlive us. Yeah. But if we are thinking that, oh, yes, because I want to be governor, let me begin to build a movement. And then three years from now, I'll be very popular. It will be only me. Mm. And then when I leave the stage, or I will just join them. And so, I agree with you, but that agreement is conditional, that we will not be the beneficiaries mm. of that. Um, I haven't even gone in. Yeah. <laughs> I am, well, yeah, I mean, to me, it's a long-term thing, so I agree with Liberos, um, that that's where our problem lies, that we have something that's going to take us like 30 years to develop, and so we have to start the system now. And that system depends on education, yeah. everything that comes before you grow Help. up, Help. before you yeah. grow up. Uh -huh. So we need to grow up Nigerians. That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. And if nobody wants to do that, if no government is interested in it, then we, are, we haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. um, Seydu, do you have... Um... We have a generic problem where, where we need to re-examine the system we're running as a people. Yes. We're running a system that is not working for us. We need to do away with the federal character and all of those nonsense that we've been implementing. That is not working for us. Let the best people rule us. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, let's let's do away and, and do away with this huge government. You know, the huge the, the government is too expensive. We can't afford it. Maybe pick something that works for us. A smaller government, maybe parliamentary system, go back to regional system. But all of this is wishful thinking because the people that are there now will never leave the stage. Mm -hmm. So how do we how do we how do we enforce change? We we'll probably need to do a referendum or something. But the way it is right now, even if you have a saint leading us, it will be very difficult yeah. Difficult because he's guided by certain rules. You have to have people from certain areas. You have to have this number of people that you don't need, you know? So the, the system we're running is going to make it difficult for us to produce good leaders, to even, you know, move forward. We need to do away with the system. That is my own contribution. We're all saying the same thing, basically, yes. but uh, it is... Um, the modality yeah. for achieving that same thing that um, differs. So Simi is saying right leadership makes everything all right. After the break, I'll be revisiting the Magus saga since the original get part two and even maybe part three. Keep it locked. In law, we say delegatus non potest delegare. That means you can't delegate that which has been delegated to you. But on the streets, they say, when you relute that that have been recovered, it is called aluta continuum or aluta continua. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission recently suspended by the president on an allegation of financial impropriety, insubordination and lack of respect to court order by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Akamalemi, he still generated comments on both social and conventional media for obvious reasons. In the history of the fight against corruption since the inception of the EFCC, one cannot but agree with the fact that Ibrahim Magu, suspended acting chairman, has risen above his pair and performed better, even obtained more convictions in court, including that of former governors, when just opposed against the record of his predecessor in the office. Kudos, however, to the stand of the president, Muhammad Buhari, to fight corruption. However, Magu's approach has largely been condemned as being selective by some discerning commentator to the extent that some have even questioned whether the government is actually fighting corrupt people or pursuing passive corrupt opponents. I leave you to be the judge of that. 
My concern today is not about whether Magu or EFCC under Magu fought corruption, because I agree that he actually fought corruption, albeit selective. But I'm concerned more about putting institutional framework that will stand the test of time, like e-government has done in United Arab Emirates, to avoid the reoccurrence of Magu pit for scenario. One of the accusations against Magu is lack of obedience to court order. A local adage states that when a father sends his son to steal, the son pulls down the door of his victim. Just figure that out. Magu is probably, probably disobeying court order with impunity because he's encouraged by the president of the Buhari administration, which are bound to dis disobey court order. Even the Nigerian police, ICPC, and other government agencies are not left out of this fragrant disobedience to court orders. We still remember the case of Pinnacle Communications against ICPC and so many others. However, President Buhari cannot be completely exonerated from Magu's attitude because apart from his failure to act on the DSS report to the 8th National Assembly, the basis for which the Senate refused his confirmation, Magu also could have been a lord unto himself because the President refused to constitute the board of the commission, leaving the acting chairman to act in any manner he deems fit without control from a board. What now made him act promptly on Malami's letter? Is it the death of Abakari? Another $1 million question for you. Secondly, is the fact that we complain about corrupt and compromised nature of our policing system. Yet, this government keep recycling policemen as the head of such agency. Almost 50% of the staff strength of EFCC are drawn from men and women of the Nigerian police, despite having a shortfall in the number of policemen and women in Nigeria. As Section 2A sub 2 of the EFCC Act did not make the position of the chairman the exclusive preserve of the police, now you know why the president is also culpable. Mind you, before you start blaming me, I'm not saying the police are bad. They have their own a numer numerous multifaceted challenges and problems to deal with. And the earlier government starts solving the problem of the Nigeria police. An institution that wins glory abroad but are reduced to garbage at home, the better for our society. But well, I know it concerns them. I would therefore advocate that the president should not only, as a matter of urgency, constitute the board of the EFCC, he should also ensure professionalism in the commission by refusing the temptation of appointing yet another policeman to head the organization. Government and agencies should also make obedience of court order paramount in all its activities and should sanction any ministries, pastors, and agency that disobeys court order. Why the NJC should, as a matter of urgency, admonish and penalize judges that are issuing frivolous and vexatious order. As respect for the rule of law is the bedrock of any democratic society. Finally, the National Assembly should look at the law setting up these anti-graft agencies with a view of amending same to not only merge the ICPSC and the EFCC, but also in line with global best practices and avoid the repeat of abuse of absolute power. Ensure that specialization in various fields of investigation, case reviewing, prosecution and asset management are encouraged and prompted to enhance transparency, probity, and accountability. And if you are in support, say aye, and those against say nay. The ayes have it. Mm -hmm. uh, Liberals, I have to commend you for the stamina you have in dissecting these things. I have to say, you have to permit me, I, I find these things very boring, very tedious, because it's almost like running around in circles. And they would have us preoccupy ourselves as if this thing, you, on the one hand, you're saying review of frivolous court orders. When I was going through that, I could find that in 2013, there was a, a committee set up to review frivolous court orders. 2015, they were doing the same thing. So it, it, it's like a recycling of the same, we're not getting anywhere fast. And I think the reason we have that, so and, we and on the one hand, you say, okay, separate, uh, merge ICPC and EP, uh, EFCC, then separate the different, so you, you try, you mix it this way, mix it that way. The, what is at the heart of it is that you have lawless people heading law, so-called law commissions. So we need to really find a way to just, as you keep referencing, cleanse the, you do the Asian stable thing. You just need one, one thing to just purify the whole system. Get rid of, as, as Trump would say, you drench, dredge, what's the word? Dredge, dredge, the dredge the swamp. Dredge the swamp, completely do a sand fill and start all over again because the people you're dealing with, I mean, I was saying to you before the program, you see the likes of Dino Malai, he's dancing. But is, is, that, is that the governance we're looking to? But he's celebrating because Magu is being held. So I'm not even interested in all of them. They're all drench, cut from the same cloth. Until you drench the trench, should we just sleep there? That's, like that's, that's why I'm more interested in having conversations around, you know, let's get the right people. I know it sounds a long-term <laughs> goal. I know, I know. You're dealing with the immediate problems. Exactly. I'm dealing with... But my own is that I'm, I'm almost prophesying that no matter what you put down, 
that system will be abused and you'll just be going around and around, we'll be analyzing it as if there was a way forward. As long as you're dealing with the same people, you will mm -hmm. still keep meeting the same bottlenecks. It's like throughout today, there's a link in everything that has been said. Yeah. Um, we, we have a problem. We have a problem that we're not mentoring people. We have a problem that people are not growing up. Yeah. Uh, we have a problem that will take a long-term solution yes. to solve. Yeah. Um, so everything we do right now is a joke. So because <laughs> so no one is serious so. about, the, about the outcome, um, I beg to say that the president does not really care where this country is going. He's unaware now. He's unaware. Yeah. And so you can't even say the president is on an anti-corruption drive. That's a joke as well. So um, there's no one, there's no goal. We don't have goals. That's the truth. It's one thing to say you have goals but you may not have them. That you say you have them is a different thing. So we're not ready. It's, it, it, liberal said it earlier, it's a complex we problem. We will learn lessons from, he's listed some lessons. We will learn those lessons. Sorry, Simi, please, you, you've tried governance. Maybe you'll tell us how likely these things are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Um, no, I, I don't have any insights to offer. Um, <laughs> the, the, he mentioned um, PACAC and, and, and all of that. The truth is, it, it shouldn't really matter who the AFCC chairman is. If it's if there's an institution that that works, why, why, why is a, the chairman uh, of the an a pivotal in, um, agency acting for five years? Doesn't make sense. Why is the chairman from one region of the country? You know, mm. um, always. You know yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. So therefore, you didn't start with uh, with sense, so you can't end with sense, you know. Um, and uh, and even the EFCC, it's sloppiness in terms of just you you go around buildings in Abuja, Lagos, and you just see EFCC in red. Um, and it's so disheartening because as a nation, it just shows if they are a foreigner, you've never been to Nigeria before, and you're walking through the best neighborhoods of our country. And you're just seeing EFCC, you know, yeah. labeled in red. Yeah. So you're showing to everybody is that we are just all thieves, and anything yeah. that is good, anything that is aspirational, anything. So why, why do you have to? Why do you take over buildings and stop the revenue? This is a country that's looking for money, and you take mm. over all these fancy buildings. People want to pay rent, but you kick everybody out. And you, mm. So EFCC has because just never have a different thing. Not managing just the, the chairman, assets. but even yeah, from what they do with the assets. And they, you, you stop people from looting, but nobody's stopping EFCC from re-looting. Because what mm. happens to these properties and what are the backdoor channels that they use to share these properties, the cars and the, the marine boats or whatever assets that they take up? They, there's no reports that shows, oh, from like, like they do in South Africa. You know, like, oh, we, we, we took up all these assets. We were able to auction it. And from this auction, we raised X amount of money. And from this X amount of money, we built this roundabout. So I'd want to say that um, you have all spoken a little bit of my mind. However, where I uh, deviate a little bit is we're not talking about the... Um, we see the agencies are not working together. There's no synergy between them. There's some level of uh, competition. So you find one agency within the same government, you know, having their own masters, another agency, you know, having taken orders from, and that way they don't share information and ultimately the because goal, the, the set is not goal in charge. is not a key. So if that goal is not clearly set and you don't have um, a single alignment of uh, purpose, you find this kind of confusion. You know, I think it's failure on the part of presidents, not ensuring that this agency are yeah. all intertwined and they share information and resources. Okay. So you don't have this guy. Because imagine the Magu we're talking about was indicted by uh, DSS yeah. years yeah. ago. Same agency within the presidency. Yeah. Okay, just so unfortunate. And um, uh, from what I can gather there, the president is not in charge. And so unfortunate, there need to be more synergy. Thank you um, very much, Seydou. And like Chuka said at the beginning, we have laid out the buffet and invited you to come and chill with us. The exchange of ideas goes on even as we close out this edition. So continue the conversation on your social media platform, on our social media platform also, and on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, Hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous episodes and broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com 
forward slash the advocate ng and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at plus tv africa because that's where we hear your feedback till next time it's bye from us and welcome to you ah okay mm. excellent Chuka, you are not waving <laughs> no no we've waved already no no, no you have to wave, you have to wave where she's waving a nice second wave thanks guys thank yeah, you yeah thank you five panelists five topical issues no holds barred for me it's not knowledge that's lacking it's that greed it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage we're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat i would you know suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable there was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.